Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Adam. And I figured out which way to point on my screen, even though it doesn't <laughs> look like it's correct on your screen. We're recording my screen until I point at him. So. <laughs> and with that, with that point, we welcome Adam back to the show. Well, thank you all for having me again. Yeah, it's, it's weird that in the last three weeks, I was probably physically closer to you than I have ever been to Ross. No kidding. Uh, yeah, no, that's not even a question. That's a definite. <laughs> yeah. So where, where out west did you travel to? So uh, <laughs> I know you said north, north rim of the Grand Canyon, right? Right. So for the listener, we did an entire episode. It's the Hummer EV and Chris goes to Utah episode. Uh, so we stayed in Kanab, Utah, um, which is literally like at a four corners location of Bryce Canyon, Zion National, Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument, which might, that might be the longest national monument slash park name. Oh, is Uh, it? Oh, we have the internet. We can find this out. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, North Rim is like an hour and a half south. Mm -hmm. So everything was like, I think Bryce Canyon was only like, it might've been a little over an hour. Um, where we stayed, Grand Staircase starts like as soon as you go any any road east out of Kanab. Uh, and then the trip to the North Rim, it looks like, if you look at Google Maps, you're like, oh, you go through like four towns. No, you go through <laughs> one town as soon as you enter Arizona, and then everything else just happens to be maybe a name of a gas station. Yep. Or like a local residence, like, yep, this is mine. I'm yeah, claiming nobody, this as taking it as well. This is how remote Arizona can be, how far it is of a drive between major cities. Correct. And right. Just like there's nothing out there. I think part of it is that A, people, when they think of Arizona, they think Phoenix and probably Flagstaff, and that's it. And B, uh, people don't unfortunately think about Arizona all too much, which is a shame because it looks amazing. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. You all probably know Chris Schantz of Venture Four Wheel Drive. Mm-hmm. He said something uh, pretty interesting to me last time he was here visiting. He said, you know, if there is a place, it is Arizona. And <laughs> I actually agree. Arizona, I the I place. It's, here. it's a truly amazing state. Well, I am. So I, I've been to Phoenix. I've been to Scottsdale. I've been to the South Rim before. Um, I've been to Vegas, but I didn't really do anything outside of town. But like, there is something about an absolutely desolate landscape. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's serenity I, in a way that you don't really ever otherwise experience. Sure. Well, well, and I told Ross, I don't know if I said this on the show or not, Ross, you can, you'll have to remind me. Uh, so I have some hearing loss, like not a ton, but like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm getting older. So it's starting to uh, degenerate. Um, and my ears were ringing all the time. And I was like, right, why are my ears you're ringing? used to the... Because yeah. there was literally no sound. And so my mm-hmm. brain was doing what it does when it's quiet and is just filling in the noise that I'm supposed to be able right. to hear. Well, it's probably doing that all the time. And you're just, right. your brain is otherwise turning it off because there's other noises present. Right. There's other um, things to be like, no, 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 we should pay attention to that car noise or we should pay attention to the... Yeah, the only also, thing we heard the whole time were like airplanes. Which is such a strange sound when it's totally like dead silent. And it's the um, only thing. Also, wife. My, my wife is literally a hearing doctor. I can get some intel on this. <laughs> I don't know. I went. I had it tested. <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay. What's the, it's the line from Big Bang Theory? I'm not crazy. My mom had me tested. Yeah. Uh, okay, update. The log, And I don't think this is a uh, necessarily a national park, but it is called the Fredericksburg and... Spotsylvania Country Battlefields Memorial National Military Park. That is the longest one. Hmm. I've probably Whatever that is. Being that I'm from Virginia. I would say, yeah. Probably. Fredericksburg yeah, that's Fredericksburg. Your neck of the woods. <laughs> county. Sorry, not country. County. Okay. Spotsylvania sounds like a, a made-up place in an animated movie. Yeah, that's basically northern Virginia area. <laughs> is it really? Like, is that? Yeah, Spotsylvania. Yeah, that's, that's kind of... Uh, I, I believe Spotsylvania specifically is, if it's not off right off 95, it's off uh, Route 17. And what's interesting is that living in, you know, being born and raised in Virginia, the terrible traffic used to be north of Fredericksburg. And Fredericksburg is about 55 miles exactly north of Richmond. 
And okay. now all of that traffic, because it just keeps growing the Northern Virginia area, now all of that traffic is in Ashland, which is only 15 miles north of Richmond. <laughs> so it used to take a while to hit that traffic, you know, going north to DC. Now it's only about 15, 20 miles out of Richmond. Mm. Wow. It's yeah. the uh, natural progression of overpopulation. Precisely. So anyways, let's hit some news. So <laughs> as we probably have all played with, the Bronco configurator went up this week. Uh, scary numbers very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I every time I get on a new vehicle configurator, I'm like, oh, I'll be able to make one I can afford. And within seconds, I'm out of my price range forever. I mean, like, yep, I could finance it and be painted off for forever but seven years <laughs> the fact of the matter is there are just options that they have in cars these days that we really don't want to live without yeah you know like apple carplay if yeah. you have an iphone it's just so convenient to just plug it in mm-hmm. and everything works mm-hmm. well and especially on a configurator where you're sitting there you're going okay well i already optioned for this you know i got heated seats and a heated steering wheel and heated wipers and you know a, a butt tickler or something yeah, and right. like you know, an extra three thousand dollar <laughs> an extra 25 bucks a month for the payment maybe exactly a little too information that's how i justify that stuff <laughs> say i i might want to know more about the butt tickler that sounds very interesting <laughs> you would <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to know more <laughs> it's the the line from uh, starship troopers do you want to know more oh god yes. <laughs> i'm doing my part uh the <laughs> cheapest bronco as a four door is $33,000 before you even start to build it. I feel like that's kind of reasonable though. Well, and, th- and that's where my, I was kind of leading us down the road of like a, a regularly option midsize sedan starts at like 35. Like the, the average car sold in the States last year was, um, we had Lieberman on and he, what did he say? He said it was like 37 or 38. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was like, okay, that's a big fucking number. You can get like, okay. For reference sake, think about 20 years ago, what a $33,000 off-road vehicle bought you. Or, or 15 years ago, you it's know? Like a, it's like uh, a, a fully loaded Grand Cherokee? Yeah, or uh, 15 years ago was an LJ Rubicon with every single option available. Yeah, it's like a three-year-old Land Cruiser. <laughs> but, yeah, let's be honest, vehicles have it's come a one-year-old a Land Rover. Long. Vehicles have come a really long way in the past, like, 10 to 15 years. Oh, absolutely. Like, transmissions, the eight and 10 speeds constantly keep you in the torque band, optimal fuel mileage. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the transmissions are, are one of the biggest probably breakthroughs in the past couple of years. Oh yeah. Speaking of, I, I didn't play around with it enough to find out if you can get the seven speed with like kind of the off-road stuff you want on the Bronco. I would expect that will eventually be special order only. So I was re-listening to an episode of our podcast today. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) Mainly because I wanted to see what Taylor did to it. So we were, we had Taylor Wallace on from Go Fast Campers uh, and he has his own podcast. You're really out there. And so he kind of hit us up and was like, Hey, do you guys care if I just repost the show as a, you're really out there episode? And I was like, I don't have any issues with that. Like, let's see what happens. And he does a lot of stuff to it, but that, episode was the same episode where it came out that you would be able to get the seven speed manual with the sasquatch package which before was all the good off-road bits but you couldn't get the manual and ford mm-hmm. immediately was like yeah that sounds dumb let's fix that right yep. like nobody who's really off-roading on like 37s is gonna get the manual anymore but it's cool to be able to tell everybody that we offer it man it just gets so expensive so fast yeah it's scary because I want a lot of vehicle. There is a lot of vehicle there. Yeah, there is. There is. And but like the uh, extra root crossbars. So like, okay, so right now I'm building a base one. I can't get the roof rack crossbars because I've selected the mud terrain tires and the advanced four wheel four by four with the 17 inch wheels. And does it automatically deselect the options that you want when you select Probably. that option? Yes. That's the thing that annoys me the most, I think, about the Ford website is I've tried to build an F-250. I'm not trying to hint at anything, but I've built <laughs> uh, including the power wagon. And, uh, you mm-hmm. know, just building that from the Ford site, I do not like how it deselects options. Yeah, right. It's like, oh, you want the upgraded engine. 
Right, Sorry. Right. It, that's, that's kind of annoying, especially when you're trying to build a truck. It's like, I just added 800 bucks. Why did it just get $3,000 cheaper? Right. Cause right. it deselected whatever package that you had previously exactly. that. Right. Anyway. You get it, like, you get like two thirds of the way through and then you go, I don't want the five liter. I want the six, two. And then the six, two just pumps everything out. Yep. Um, now I want to build a power wagon, which, so we're talking about new car prices. Uh, I did see something that from last year to this year, the average price of a Ram truck went from $47,000 to $51,000. Oh my God. So Ram trucks was making heavy duty or bank. Nope. Just Ram trucks. <laughs> So fifteen hundred. One of the best options out there. They really are. They're nice trucks. They went up nine percent over one year. Yeah. Holy fuck. Popularity probably did too. Probably yeah. Probably I see more and more of them. I mean, sure. I talk about my brother's Ram Rebel all the time, but that thing is awesome, and it's well, it was, almost five years old. I think twenty nineteen was the first year of the uh, new eight speed transmission, as far as I understand. That probably had something to do with it. That sounds right. I think people are just catching on and more people are buying trucks in place of luxury vehicles, like luxury SUVs or cars. And they get in a Ram and they go, holy shit, this is like my car, you know, or at least has the same kind of accoutrements versus uh, like, you know, the Silverado still kind of has some shitty materials. And I say that lovingly. My dad's truck is fantastic. It just, <laughs> his 2019, <laughs> like the materials just aren't as good as my brother's. 2016 ram you know right plus plus the ram has you connect in it which which is might... taking a couple shits <clears throat> well it, i'm sure it has and and no system is completely flawless like everybody has software issues but like that's the most straightforward system that i've ever used yeah it's pretty good driving ford chevy toy yep. i've never really been happy with toyota's infotainment like i've always oh god like, one of my f- fucking fifth gems awful right like the 2013 highlander is the one i've spent the most time in and around and i'm like i mean it's okay but like yeah it's between sync and you connect right that was one of my problems with the the heritage edition was like okay this is ninety thousand dollars <laughs> you know the the infotainment in my parents grand cherokee which was like 40 is 10 times better because it's and, you connect based <laughs> you, okay and, and given and not to poo-poo FCA at all, but like their Uconnect unit, the actual whole interface died twice in the first 30,000 miles and <laughs> had to be replaced under warranty twice in 30,000 miles. The Toyota one will probably outlive us. Let's be real. Um, all right. But I don't know. It, it's such a wide swath of where tech is right now on new cars. Considering I turned 40 next week, I don't really want to think about a uh, entertainment <laughs> system outliving me, even though I know they will. <laughs> Knock it off. Yeah. So Sorry, I, had, I, had a, I had a dog rumble going down back here. Dog rumble. Oh. It's been a, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> it's been a zoo. Yesterday I had kids running through the back of the shop. Dogs today. It's go time. And it's a lot new. quieter here. <laughs> so interestingly enough, I was reading this article uh, on the, the 77 Blazer E that GM just did, mm-hmm. which I think is, I mean, really interesting. Uh, reason being is, I, you know, of course, I think electric is, you know, the future. That's that's kind of where everything seems to be going. Uh, but they're basically treating this like an e-crate motor. So it's an electric crate motor that you can swap into your old vehicle. And I was thinking about this probably six months ago. Like I've done the diesel swap on my XJ. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, I guess if that becomes um, obsolete, so to speak, as in diesel is hard to find, oil is hard to find maintenance parts are hard to find, et cetera, I would absolutely consider an electric swap for the vehicle. Reason being is, I mean, you have like 100% torque at zero RPM. It and, kind of sense for an off-road vehicle. Yeah, and effectively no moving parts. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, very little maintenance, I would imagine. Um, oh, God. You know, and considering the, ba- the battery technology keeps up and batteries get smaller and lighter weight, it makes more sense, but... I certainly don't want to put a thousand pounds of battery in my vehicle just to move it down the road. Right. An electric XJ would be like a perfect icon vehicle in like 10 years when icon eventually is doing XJs. But I mean, you could do so much with that. that. Might not even be 10 years away. 
<laughs> fair. It's That's like five fair. Years away. How much does what's an XJ? What's what's okay? So what's a uh, base XJ weigh, and what do you think yours weighs roughly? Um, I think base is around like thirty-two or thirty-four hundred pounds. What the fuck? You in a body construction, and it, I don't know when the last time you were in an XJ was. They're tiny vehicles. They are really deceptively really small. small. Like, I don't understand like how people dealt with how small those vehicles are. Were people just smaller back then? Did we get, just get bigger? When yes. I, when I grew up, my parents had, my, my household, like when I was a baby, my parents had an XJ and a YJ. Yeah. And those seemed like <laughs> good vehicles back then, but they're, they're not by modern standards by any means. Uh, you know, narrow track, narrow body, but uh, yeah, I would say 32 to 3,400 pounds ish. And if I had to guess what mine weighs now, I would say I'm probably somewhere around 4,250 ish. Even so, that's yeah, what I mean, a Grand Cherokee the weighs. Motor maybe added 50 stock. pounds over the stock four liter. Is it? Holy and, shit. And uh, then I've just literally got three and a half inch lift suspension, 31 inch tires, bumpers, front and rear, and a sleep platform and two refrigerators. Right. So 4,200 yeah, pounds by modern standards is like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the XJ, I think the GVWR is pretty close to that, if not that. So you're, mm-hmm. you're, the curb weight I found was 3,300. So you crushed okay. that. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Spot on. Yeah. I, I know my XJs grew up with them. Um, yeah. But, uh, Your XJ yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, the weight seems to be fine right now with, with the diesel motor. Of course, I'd always like to you know take weight off of it. And I did end up selling my rooftop. Tent. Well, we can get into that in the next subject. I thought we were still, <laughs> we're still so, but as, as Chevy brought this up, like I wrote a, I wrote, I wrote a post for, for Hooniverse like forever ago. And now I can't find the date on when I posted it. <laughs> the year was. So literally almost a year ago, October 17, 2019, because electric awesome. GT came out with their version of an electric crate mm-hmm. engine. And it even looks kind of like a v8 it's got the yeah that one was so cool it like actually was mocked up to sit like a v8 it was yeah. so rad oh adam has a part of screen sharing stock yet. motor mounts for the gas motor potentially yes they yeah. they are like okay. yep they they went full on for crate engine and i'm trying to share the screen and talk at the same time and it's not <laughs> going well so and this is they they had it mocked up for an FJ62. I think they had it mocked up with an FJ40. Um, but they they literally were like, it'll fit in anything. And for them, each – God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the mouse to talk. This is stupid. Um, <laughs> sorry to the listeners. Like each so section listeners, yeah. here of, of the front, you can then add an additional section behind. Oh, wow. So like you can double the amount of the electric motor that you have in there. Just mm-hmm. by adding, I got to see if I can find one. That's so was. cool. What was the air cleaner about? It looks like there's like a fake air cleaner on the bottom there. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's probably for battery. Too. No, not maybe battery it's cooling. part of the cooling. I mean, yeah. uh, hybrids do have coolant and cooling systems. But that still wouldn't explain why there's a filter on there. Anyways, um, electric blazer, awesome gm's doing it as demonstration it's the supposed follow-up to that crate motor that they had in like the electric copo camaro right does that sound about right that um, well there there was a a c10 as well that's true and that was also very good my only problem with this whole thing and i'm super nitpicking but i'm looking at it going oh this blazer is really awesome why is the current blazer they're selling not anywhere near as awesome? <laughs> Why is the current they blazer mention, horrible? Like, the weight of the actual electric motor anywhere in that article? I don't think I, I caught that. I didn't oh. see the weight of it. Because what I'd be curious about is if you have a 700 pound, you know, Chevy V8 in there or 600 pounds or whatever they weigh. The 305's got to be six or 700. Easy. Yeah, that's, I, I owned a Porsche 914 with a 305. Those things are heavy. I can't. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd be curious if there's a big weight difference. If say the electric motor is 150 pounds, you know, one thing you'd have to do with uh, doing a, an electric swap on that motor, for example, is probably have a little bit less suspension in the front because you're not suspending as much weight. So I would imagine the front end gets a little bit lighter, which is possibly dangerous with steering. You probably could be sketchy. Look into those things. Um, yeah, just a thought. An interesting one. 
Uh, really, or you just lift it six inches and, you know, screw drive, drive frame losses. And, and the thing with electric the motors, so. Because the front went up six inches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ground clearance got better. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's so cool. I'm so about this. Like. Yeah, I think it's the future. I think it's a great way to go for sure. It's, it's not, and it won't work for everybody and it'll never be a perfect replacement, at least not in our lifetime. But something like this or an XJ, you know, or like uh a, an early FJ with an electric drivetrain off road. I don't so, need to hear, you know, there a, are, you know, the infrastructure for charging stations is in place and these things have a decent uh, range of like three to 400 miles. I think I would consider that. So decent. that's strong. That, bonus yeah. for sure. that, that make, that brings me to the point where um, our coworker at Hooniverse Robbie had a RAV4 prime which has some plug-in hybrid element to him. There's only like one charging station in all of Milwaukee that he could use. That's a problem. And I was like, Milwaukee's not a small city. Like that's a couple hundred thousand people, isn't it? It's probably more than that. But if it's only it's one, not like you run out of juice on your way to the, your your charger. Exactly. And he was like, yeah, he yeah. had so the the Rapport well, Prime. Sh- is at least a plug-in hybrid. So like he's got the hybrid system for when mm-hmm. the battery runs out. But he had a, a a Mini Cooper that was a fully electric and he was like, oh, Mini. range anxiety. And also the battery pack in the back of this Blazer. Like I know this is a SEMA build and it's supposed to be like kind of showing it off, but like they took out the rear seat and it's just battery pack. Yeah, it looks, yeah. Like, Doc, it looks like Doc Brown got to this thing, you know? It's like- Yeah, I, I, Doc Brown's- creations were more finished looking than that frankly yeah, i agree i agree because a prop builder did it yeah and i i have a relative who's in school for that right now and they make cool shit uh they do they do <laughs> especially the way they make weapons look real even though they're completely fake so right that, i think they learned point. their lesson with that <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me think about can i turn the land cruiser into an ev Mm. and like what would i have to do like that battery pack it so that's a bolt ev battery pack which is why it's right. shaped the way it is there they the didn't skateboard do, shape yeah they didn't do any different to uh to the packaging to make it fit better in the blazer they literally just took the bolt ev batteries and threw them in the back so if you were curious about the size of a bolt compared to the size of a blazer <laughs> A bolt there would fit in the interior bolt of a would, blazer. For it sure. would fit. <laughs> like Torchinsky put that Indian electric vehicle in the back of the Tremor. If it, it'll fit. Just I thought it was Chinese. I don't wonder how much that, that battery pack weighs too. They didn't disclose that, did they? I don't think so. No, but I, I bet think it's a lot. I think that's something that they're probably withholding deliberately. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that was hundreds of pounds. Oh, oh yeah, Definitely. I mean, so according to Google, very dense, <laughs> man, I'm on top of it tonight. 960 pounds is what oh they think. Uh, so the not, bolt- only, not only did you reduce the weight in the front, potentially, if that motor weighs hundreds of pounds less than the gas version, but you also added a thousand pounds to the rear of that vehicle. There's no way that handles well anymore. Not that it didn't when it was stock, but probably worse now. Yeah. K5 Blazers weren't known for how great they handle. No, especially not the, uh, what were the ones with the campers built onto the back? They had a certain name. Oh, God, the Chinook? Chinook. Nope. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That was you're just a trim. That, that was uh, a trim. You're thinking of the Blazer Chalet. Chalet. And then the GMC Sierra El Grande. We talked about this like a month ago. I know, but the Blazer Chalet is definitely what we're thinking of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one yes. where like literally – the uh, the front wheels were just about off the ground when you were going. They down. were. <laughs> there was so much weight back behind the um, you know the rear axle. Oh god, it's just a wheelie truck. It's fine. Oh man, I um, messed up the Jimmy. It's the oh. GMC Jimmy Casa Grande. I apologize. Mm-hmm. It's lar- large house for those who aren't. No, never mind. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I've, no, I've been studying like, Italian lately. That's not even oh, well, close. <laughs> hey, they're not that far. I mean, some similarities, not really. But uh, EV Land Cruiser would be pretty awesome if it got like if you can milk like three fifty out of it on a charge. That would be pretty freaking We're awesome. Like a two hundred series, right? 
no, no, I'm, I was talking Chris's about my, 80, my series. 80 series. Oh, the 80. Yeah, it, yeah, that'd be a great swap. If I could get 250 miles range out of that, that would be better than what I'm getting out of the gas engine right now. What are you... So, what? So we have an 80 here, a, a work truck, a work vehicle for Adventure Imports. Do you need another one? It's technically... <laughs> well, yeah. So it's an, HD, it's an HDJ81, so it's okay. right-hand drive. What and the vehicle. fuck is that? It's a right-hand drive turbo diesel. Yep. Oh, and there's. I drove past one of those the other day. Yeah, those pictures. things are awesome. But uh, that thing has an extra. I think it's a. I think it holds 52 gallons of fuel. So it has the Long Range 52? America auxiliary tank. I believe it does. And uh, yeah, I think I got something like. God, it was like 700 miles on that range. Holy shit! Day. Just driving around Arizona. Um, it was just incredible. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was in the 700. So awesome. Last Saturday, Sam, my wife and I went up to our college town to attempt to go hiking feebly because every single hiking spot was literally overloaded. And there's this one like random little shop that always has weird imports and, you know, like crazy projects. Um, some of the off-road stuff they have is absolutely wild. And we, I made the turn and was trying to like avoid hikers crossing the road. And she kind of poked me and was like, there's a Land Cruiser over there and it's a turbo on the back. What does that mean? And I looked quick and it was an 80. I was like, oh, that means it's a good one. It's a really good <laughs> one. <laughs> that means Which, it was imported. That means we didn't get the good stuff. Everyone else did. Half so, the stuff this place has is never, ever titled here. <laughs> yeah. And that was, we, we talked to uh, John Watson, who's John Prolly on Instagram, who had an, uh, a diesel 80 series and now has a diesel troopy. But his, his take on the turbo diesel JDM stuff was very different than what I've heard before. And that was that um, they rarely would drive them on like interstates and stuff. They would be in like city traffic and they would never really break in the diesels the way they needed to be broke in um and so when you then import a jdm uh turbo diesel sometimes there's a bit of yes. a when it needs um motor work <laughs> yeah <laughs> valves and seals and things that had <laughs> yeah. never really been set Pissing properly rings. in a in a an appropriate break-in period and so i hadn't heard that before about turbo diesel yeah, interestingly enough, the HDJ1 that we have, uh, that motor's been not completely rebuilt, but gone through. Gone through, right? And I'll tell gone you, through. Is, gone through is a nice way of saying I've done everything except break it down to the bottom of the block. Yeah, I think the original, like the, the you know, bearings are, you know, pretty original in that thing. It's, um, I don't know what else is, but uh, I mean, that, that I'll, I'll be honest with you, that motor runs fantastic. It's balanced. It doesn't shake. It's not noisy. Yeah, well, it is a little noisy when they're on the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's it's just a great motor i think it's is it the it's not the one uz it's the one hdt i think is that mm. designation of motor that HDT? sounds like it's something might be wrong on that but i think it's the straight six turbo diesel 4.2 liter 4.2 4 yeah hd one hdt hdt is a six cylinder 12 valve turbo diesel engine uh straight six, yep. straight six. yeah yeah Peak torque at 3,600 RPM. Yeah. That's yeah, how you know it's a, a diesel. It's a plug until you get into the turbo. Uh, it's either a diesel or a Bentley. So peak torque, I'm reading, is 1,400 RPMs. Okay. Peak horsepower is 3,600, but peak oh. torque is down low. <laughs> <laughs> Idle. Yeah, exactly. As a diesel should. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair. Fair. That's why they redline it 4,000. <laughs> If true. I think uh, I think my turbo diesel actually revs higher than that. I think people can you can rev them to like between five and six. Interestingly enough, I remember really? you saying that. I remember being shocked. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a super unique motor, but um, yeah, which is back to running good. I just did a uh, little tune up on it the other day. So let's yeah. let's talk about it. Yeah, it's it's oh, gone yeah, through yeah. some changes. It's not the same. Yeah. So uh, uh, a year ago, well, actually. A little over a year ago, I got done with the uh, OM617 swap, which is a three liter, five cylinder uh, Mercedes turbo diesel out of a 1983 300D sedan Mercedes that I swapped into the XJ. Uh, stock, it puts out about 125 horse and about 195 foot pounds. This motor has about 250,000 miles on it, runs fantastic, 
compression is is as good as it gets. Um, it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a great motor. And I once I got it in the XJ and got that thing out on the highway, I was seeing about 26 and a half, 27 miles per gallon. Jesus. And, and you're on, you said you're on 32s? 31s, actually. 31s. Oh, my God. One inch tires and uh, 410 gears. And she's locked front and rear as well. But um, yeah, it's mated to a uh, AX15 five speed transmission. And mm -hmm. uh, the adapter kit came from a company that uh, luckily it, for me exists. There were two companies that made adapter kits and I went right. One was in company. Pennsylvania. Yeah. One in Pennsylvania. I will not mention the name because <laughs> the guy is terrible and he doesn't care. Uh, but that adapter kit was absolutely terrible. I had horrible vibrations. I was on the way to probably ruining my transmission. Uh, luckily, a guy named uh, Joe, he's uh, based in Nebraska as a company called Doomsday Diesel. And he developed a kit that is actually done correctly. Um, you know, is, is centered, everything is, is correct the way it needs to be. And I've had that kit in, uh, in the Jeep for about 9,000 miles now. Flawless, zero issues. That's a for, for the first lot for a swap. Miles. Yeah, for the first 3,000 miles with that original uh, kit from the guy in Pennsylvania, it was uh, vibrations, the thing ran terribly. I ate up a throw out bearing, I ate up a pilot God. bearing uh, in 3,000 miles. So yeah, that kit absolutely had to come out and I, the uh, kit from Doomsday was double the price. I would have gladly play, paid quadruple the price. <laughs> yeah. I, one of the weird things in the off-road world is you really do genuinely get what you pay for. Exactly. Well, I mean, the problem with the first kit that I had, it was the only one on the market at the time. Luckily, mm -hmm. when I started having problems, that second sit, you know, set uh, or kit came out. And uh, I think I was like the third person to get one because he had a test phase and tested you know, the, the hell out of it and everything works perfect. And there are times now that I drive that XJ that I'm like, I forget that it didn't wasn't originally diesel powered. It mm. just runs so well. Do um, people actually swap XJs? I mean, aside from the the turbo diesel five cylinder, like you know, because TJs and YJs and even up to JKs, people are doing you know LS motors like yeah, like so fucking crazy or three fifties. I think the most power I ever saw in an XJ was from a um, a two JZ uh, super swap. And it was then t twin turbocharged. It's a red XJ. I think it's on like 35s, 36s, or 37s. Oh, God. Uh, really do nice they build. Own a stake uh, in U-joints? Like in a company that buys and sells U-joints? They That's Christ. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I would think he probably upgraded the entire drivetrain. Uh, but it was a really well done XJ and high power XJ. I don't really understand why you want a high power lifted XJ. A little bit of a waste, but uh, yeah. Usable torque, all it's about. There, people do, uh, you know, LS swaps in them. Um, I don't even I know if I've seen that. anything too crazy outside of V8 swaps and diesel swaps, but mm. you know, there's there's probably somebody that's put uh, um, what's the the um, the four BT yeah yep. the Cummins motor in an yep. X-ray. Can't tell you how bad it is. That is unbelievably heavy. The four BT. Absolutely agree. Great motor, but just yep. extremely heavy. I remember a long time ago, I, I used to have a Tahoe, a GMT 800 Tahoe, and somebody was swapping a 4BT into like one of them with a blown 5.3. And they were like, yeah, it weighs a little more, about like 400 pounds. Yeah. And you're slamming that in the nose of the trunk. Not good. Totally agree. I have probably mentioned it before. I have a Land Cruiser associate here in town running a 6BT in the front of an 80 series. And he has custom coil overs made. I probably up. rides like shit. I, he has never complained about it. He had custom coil overs made. So <laughs> I'm sure he's got plenty of torque, though. Oh, yeah. He's got tons of torque. Yeah, which the gas versions of those trucks just, they just fall flat on their face every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so you updated your radiator. I did. So I went with a. Um, it's a Mopar HD radiator, which is about three quarters of an inch thicker than the stock XJ radiator. So it fits in, you know, the stock positioning and everything. Oh, good. And I also upgraded my, I removed the mechanical fan from the diesel engine, which hopefully I gained about three horsepower, but, you know, I can't really tell. <laughs> uh, and went with these uh, electric, these triple row electric fans from Mishimoto. And okay. What that is, it's kind of like an aluminum shroud with mm -hmm. 10 inch fans across the radiator. And huh. each fan is supposed to move 950 CFM per fan. Holy so crap. Tripled. And what's OEM? Like, what's that? What was on there? What was the rating prior? 
Uh, with the stock fans, I don't know, but I can guarantee it wasn't anywhere near these. Quite a lot less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give you a, a specification and increase airflow at idle 41.9%. And and so, I mean, you're getting a lot more airflow uh, through there. And one thing that people don't often realize is that XJ hoods trap heat right up at the top near the firewall. Okay. So you almost have to do hood vents uh, with those if you're having overheating issues, which I'm not. And not anymore. Course, I, don't, I don't really like the way hood vents, you know, look on an XJ, but I understand their purpose and, and uh, you know, now that, absolutely work just to vent the heat out. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've seen a lot of XJ builds with hood vents. Like, you know, they, they do the hood. So it's got the two on the side. So it looks kind of like an Evo or something. Right. Right. Now that I'm thinking about it, that is uh, common. Yeah, quite common, but luckily I don't have those issues. I mean, the Jeep will get up to, you know, 210. There's a pass coming out of Phoenix uh, where you, I think, ascend, I don't know, something like 1,500 feet in, in a couple of miles. Maybe it's 2,000 feet or something mm -hmm. like that. But, uh, yeah, the pass is like a 5% grade, and it's like five or six miles long. And I was ascending it in 97-degree heat in the XJ right after putting that fan system on there. The engine never got hotter than 210 degrees. I've got about 195 degree thermostat in there. So wow. it's telling you how effective those fans are. And That's my pretty good. On the floor in fourth gear, you know, going, I think, 55 or 60 up that pass. Um, and, yeah, the, the motor never overheated, did pretty well. So I think mm -hmm. between that radiator and the fan system, I've got cooling worked out pretty well for here in Arizona where we see some serious temperatures, especially southern Arizona down in Phoenix area. You can see – 117 degrees at its at its hottest. Holy fuck! I have never experienced anything like that. So the interesting thing about about experiencing heat like that, and and the thing that I didn't realize until I actually experienced it myself, we went down to Phoenix one day, and I think the high down there was 117 degrees that day. And you, of course, you know, a lot of parking is covered because you don't want your car sitting in that because it gets to 140 degrees in the vehicle. You know, it's you know not a very yeah, you melt your ass off. That's where the metal on your seatbelt will scald you and leave a mark. Yeah. It's kind of like oh, touching a frying pan real quick. Yeah. It's <laughs> but the other interesting thing is if you have a, a vehicle like uh, a Jeep Gladiator, which is what we were in, where you have exposed metal on the interior, when you get in and you start driving the vehicle after it's been sitting in that amount of heat and in the sun, the heat is radiating off of that metal inside of the vehicle because the entire vehicle, which is metal, is heat soaked. Yeah. And it's just an odd mm -hmm. feeling to like be sitting next to metal and you're like, why is that uncomfortable? Right. And the AC is <laughs> blowing full blast, but it's been right. 20 it's minutes really and you're still hot. Feeling. It's never, you know, something I've never experienced in a vehicle is just complete heat soak. And the Gladiator is not exactly the um, pinnacle of insulation. Precisely. <laughs> Good there's, truck. There's, there's really tons of yeah, aftermarket absolutely. companies that do insulation for JKs, JLs. You can, the, if you... I mean, not that I've ever done this, but if you go on the build and price for the Gladiator or the Wrangler, if you get the hard top, they have panels, insulating pieces as an option for the hard top. It's not shocking that Mopar would have figured out how to accessorize something. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm surprised it didn't have like a, Honestly, you know, a tap out logo on it. <laughs> Gladiator is just, I mean, we've, we've got one. It's a, I think it's a 19, one of the first, first ones, the Rubicon edition. It's lifted, I think, two and a half inches. It's on 37s, and it's got an AT. Um, is it a AT Habitat? It might be. It's the one that, that pops up at an angle. It doesn't yeah. have a back. Uh, I think it's a Summit. I think it's a Summit. Summit. Uh, Sounds right. Really nice setup. Really great cool. setup. The thing I like most about the Gladiator is it's a narrow vehicle with wide track axles. I, mm -hmm. I just think that's awesome because it just feels really maneuverable. It doesn't feel too big or too wide. Um, and you know, with the eight speed transmission, 37s and 48 gears, it's still got plenty of power. Right. Right. Yeah. Just wait until they throw a 392 in it. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. You know, it's coming. Yeah. Yep. So, so there's something missing from the top of your Jeep. Yeah. So I recently, I had a, uh, roof nest, hard shell rooftop tent on there. Had that for about almost three years and it was a fantastic tent. Um, but, you know, as I, I don't know, started driving the Jeep around here, I started realizing that all the hills and elevation changes, I needed to make the Jeep lighter. Mm -hmm. And while the tent was great and comfortable, I've kind of, it's kind of always been a little bit of 
of a redundancy because I've actually got a sleep platform built into into the back of the XJ. Ooh. Sleep on there, you know, comfortably if I push the front seats forward. I'm six foot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to make the Jeep as light and efficient as possible. And unfortunately, a, a 200 pound, oh, maybe more of about 150 pound rooftop tent up on the top of a narrow track. XJ. The worst place for 150 pounds to yeah, sit. A small, narrow vehicle. It just, it, it doesn't really work well. Mm. It's doable, but I could tell I was really straining the vehicle with that much weight up top. So uh, it really makes more sense for me to just go with a roof rack. And I went with the uh, JCR, JCR's new roof rack, um, which is, you know, just a super nice setup. It reminds me a lot of the Prinsu for Toyotas. It does. Yeah, yeah. It really does. It kind of fits the vehicle. It looks like it was made for it. Whereas you have racks like the Front Runner, which are kind of universal to all vehicles. So I don't really like the look as much, even though they are quality racks and they are a great product. Uh, I just didn't really care for the way it looked as much where, um, you know, the, that one just fits the vehicle so much better. It's got a ton of accessories, mm -hmm. a lot of support. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I've got my Max Tracks mounted up there. Now I'm going to do a, an ARB awning on one side. The only reason for that is they have the awning room because mm -hmm. I'd like some place to have a shelter. And right. then on the other side, I'm likely going to do, in fact, I already have these things. So I say I'm going to do them, but I, they're, it's coming. <laughs> Uh, I actually have a CVT shower awning to go right above nice. your corner where my onboard shower system is on that exterior panel. Okay. So I can okay. it, open that up, take a shower, you know, all those kinds of things. Cause I'm one of those guys that when I go out there, I don't really like to go more than two days without a shower. Mm -hmm. You know, one of those mm -hmm. things, you know, it just, it's, you know, it's just kind of gross when you go that long. Yeah. Away, you know? Especially you feel in different desert. Like, yeah. You're just living in your own funk. That's not fun. That well, you know, living in your own funk. The dust gets, everywhere it does it does like good showers yeah yeah just to knock the you know dust off it's one mm. of those showers where you wet yourself down you soak yourself up and you rinse yourself off i've only got 10 gallons so right. the shower it's cold it's, it's gonna be cold it's fine yeah i mean two gallons of water is enough to take a shower if you really ration it and believe it or not we were i was this was years ago when i first put the, put that system in but i was leading a group uh you know on a on an expedition on a trip uh, a, a guided trip and uh, there were a bunch of people that wanted to shower. I was like, well, I have a finite amount of water, but we actually in 10 gallons got five people showered, uh, which was, you know, pretty interesting. And that's all hot. That's a hot water system, by the way. It's not just cold. Oh, wow. Water. That's luxury. a danger in the engine bay that runs the fresh water through one side and then coolant through the other through uh, what's called a due to diesel uh, heat exchanger, 20 plate, I believe, if I remember correctly, stainless steel and copper. Hmm. It's extremely efficient. I mean, you can literally get water coming out of that system hot enough to make coffee if you wanted to. I mean, it's, wow. the engine's running That's degrees, you're getting 200 degree water coming out of that thing. Hell yeah. So, yeah That's it's amazing. Really, really great system. Yeah, but there is some beauty and simplicity. Like yep. a rooftop tent, a hard shell tent is about as simple as it gets for camping or overlanding, but streamlining the whole thing is, it's, yeah, is game changing. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So the uh, the kind of the idea is just to make the Jeep as efficient as possible um, mm -hmm. while still kind of maximizing all the gear that you need, you know, when you're out there for two people. Because, I mean, I pulled the rear seats out, so the XJ is just a two-seater at this point. Um, but I, I think it's capable enough the way it's set up or, or will be set up here shortly to sustain, you know, somebody out in the middle of nowhere or two people out in the middle of nowhere for, I would say, up to 10 days. Okay. Um, you know, considering you have dry food, there's plenty yeah, of food. Yeah. You've got the fridge freezer console, which is a Dometic between the yep. front seats. And then under the uh, rear sleep platform is a Dometic drawer fridge, which is, I think, 31 quarts, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, I've only heard good things about Dometic. Yeah, Dometic products, they're, they're fantastic. I've had these, these <clears> freezers for, in the Jeep for like four years now. And the Jeep oh, wow. that for a year and a half not running when I was doing the diesel swap. And as soon as I had everything connected back up, those both of those fridges fired right up like nothing. Nice. Else. So yeah, testament to uh, how great their products are for sure. Does your ARB awning uh, room does it have the floor? It will, yeah, yeah. So I haven't actually ordered the uh, the floor yet, but yeah, they still have that available. So something like this, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the nice thing is, is like you have the interior of the vehicle as sleeping space, and okay. then that's kind of a lounge space, you know, that that kind of thing where you can get changed and oh, yeah, have yeah. a place to actually like 
hang out that's not exposed to the elements. Has, that's kind of the idea. Because I mean, you don't really want to hang out in a rooftop tent. They're too small. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't spend, and you can't invite You're going anyone up there else to sleep. up there. Yeah. Right. Right. You just go up there to sleep or change or whatever. But with the awning room, that actually gives you a little bit of space to actually do something. Say so the the Instagram couples make rooftop tents seem like it's a great place to hang out. Yeah. It's very glamorous if you're an Instagram couple. But that's because yeah. they just got done doing it. Like <laughs> spit take. <laughs> tents have their place. I think they're 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 great. You know, depending on what your setup is. Jesus but if you're gonna travel long, <laughs> if you're gonna travel long distance, you need a place to where you, you know you can you can lounge, you can hang out. Mm-hmm. That's not exposed to the elements. Hence, the Airbnb awning room makes sense. And you know, I, I unfortunately I, I just went up to uh, Vegas this past weekend to CBT's Cascadia Vehicle Tents grand opening. Uh, Bobby called wow. to open a new a new place there, and I didn't realize the CBT actually made the shower rooms, the shower awnings, you know, the super super small ones. So I grabbed oh, really? him. Oh uh, So I've got the CBT, and it's got you know the black uh, the black cover on it, which of course goes with the Jeep because the Jeep is red and black. But now I have this ARB awning with this with a you know gray cover on it, and I'm like. Did I send that back and get the CVT awning? With it? <laughs> <laughs> so it matches, you know, should I, should I spend well, the, the extra dollars to do that? Or, or should I just keep what I've got? But uh, I don't know. We'll see if I want to be picky and nitpick the Jeep, which I probably will. I always have. I'll probably yeah. It doesn't sound like you're going to get rid of it. So it, it's bound to happen. Oh, the, the, the Jeep, the, the Jeep stays with me forever. That is a forever vehicle, which means that I can spend stupid amounts of money on it and not have to justify it. Yeah. Just Cause it's, just it's saying. every purchase there is an investment. You're spending on yourself. Exactly. Exactly. So the Jeep only gets better. But I will be honest with you. I'm probably going to end up doing King's suspension. Mm-hmm. Maybe some King's and some Jeep speed stuff. Not because I want to hoon the Jeep, but just because I want to put the nicest stuff on there. Yeah, sure. Yep. So, yeah. XJs are becoming... <laughs> what would you, would you say, Chris? I, de- I said, do you want to make it float? Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. I mean, amphibious I, XJ. Suspension on XJs, it's just, yeah, it's laughable. Like trophy truck like, suspension. Let's just not yeah. feel a bump ever. Yeah. I mean, if the truck's light trophy enough, you might as well. That would be nice. It probably, I mean, for it to. I want to be able to drive the staircase and not know it. That, <laughs> this, that'll be $4,000. That's actually about the price of it. Yeah. That's yeah, I know. Uh, I trust me. Nice. Spend enough time playing yeah. around on the King's on King's <laughs> site. For everything that I want, I'm just like, why am I doing this again? I could have four other XJs for that amount of money. Okay. okay. I totally have a side note. When <laughs> driving to the North Rim, as we were driving back, we're driving through this tiny town of Fredonia, <laughs> Arizona. There is a oh boy, used. Your favorite. Yeah. There's a used car lot there. And I swear there are like seven XJs on the lot. Really? All lined up. Like, it was kind of nuts. Do they have any Wagoneers with the quad headlights? Can you put dollar deposits on any of them? I'm sure you can. Uh, I'm going to have to try to look it up. I don't. So the interesting thing about XJs is like the really nice original low mileage ones, prices are through the roof. On some of them, I would say prices are like. Comical? Well, not I wouldn't say comical because I, I understand, you know, the value of a really nice original XJ. They're only original or they're only nice once. Uh, <laughs> sure. But literally sure. the prices have gotten to the point where they're now costing more than the original MSRP. For example, I, I used to have mm-hmm. the original window sticker in my Jeep. Unfortunately, I lost it in my move out here. I think I told you all about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you all lost my shipping container when I moved out to Arizona. That was a Could, lot. Yeah. But anyways, I think the original MSRP on my XJ, it's a 94 S five speed four liter base model does have air conditioning. Luckily Uh, it doesn't right now, but it will. Um, (laughs) But uh, I believe the original MSRP was like 18 three or something like that. Sounds about right. And now you're seeing clean low mileage. When I say low mileage, like 80,000 and under right. Uh, Low mileage XJs go for, you know, 20 grand. I think the highest one I saw was a 92 Briarwood with like 21,000 original miles. Yes, I need to contact them. Oh boy, those look like they were, uh, the white ones at least look like they were like police or fleet vehicles. Yeah, those are 97 or newer as well. It looks like. Yeah, they are. They're the updated ones. Um, Very cool. I'm, it's really creepy that we can do that. It is. <laughs> I can, it is. can remember I, a random spot. <laughs> 
I'm on Bring a Trailer because I know there was an XJ recently. So that that's actually Canab. Uh, that's not Fredonia. Also, I searched XJ on Bring a Trailer and it brought up an entire page of Jaguar Jaguars. XJs. What do you yeah. think, dude? It's Bring a Trailer. <laughs> But then again, the XJ12 was a cool car, and they're still cheap. A 12-cylinder. They are. They are. Car. Yeah, I'm in for not, like three grand. Sure. We're not fancy enough for them, though. We're talking about XJ Cherokees. Right. Uh, Adam, Adam there okay. there have been recent discussions that have gone through Hooniverse Slack about just cheap horsepower. Yeah. And so one of the Hooniverse riders has a, a Mustang with the per- performance pack on it. Mm-hmm. And another one of the riders just bought a Mustang GT today. today. Ex guest, uh, he was a guest on our show. Yeah, well, William. Mustangs have come so far in the past 10, 15 years. I mean, well, they're, they're actually really great sports cars now. In, in they were great in two thousand twelve. They were great in two thousand twelve. <laughs> yeah, before the IRS car. At GT thrifty or G, GT GT thrifty. GT thrifty. <laughs> it's not thrifty. No, the GT three fifty. They came out with the track pack and like the button you push and it goes into track mode. Yep, it's a badass car. It really yeah, is. They are. I, they they have piqued my interest of just like when when I first started writing about cars it was around 2010 11 and 12 and some of those Mustangs even then were just they were a blast to rip around in they're so good and I'd have the boys in car seats behind me just giggling just <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly enough that cheap horsepower thing you mentioned I don't know if you all keep up with um, some of the on the YouTubers. Uh, the guys that are doing Car Trek, the guys from uh, VinWiki, I think it's Tyler Hoover and Tavarish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Car yeah. Trek. They, you know, one of the great cars they had was in, the, I think it was an SL600 or an SL65. So it oh, had God. V12 in it. Yep. It's like a 700 oh. foot pound of torque V12 in that car. They didn't make a whole lot of them. But you can pick those cars up for like fifteen grand, yeah, and it probably what? costs seven hundred dollars per mile to run. That's not <laughs> like, you know, aging AMG cars, some of them are really good, some of them are really bad. I think the V twelve car was probably not a very good one, but seven hundred foot pounds of torque for fifteen grand. That's yeah, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. It was crazy when you could get like an 04 GTO for seven grand. And it was so, 400 horsepower, not 600 and something. The you know? SL65 retailed for $180,000. And so look at that depreciation. You go from 180 to 15 grand. Right? That's, that's awesome. I don't think that, I don't think it is a better deal. And we're talking about XJs that are going back past their original MSRP. Yeah, <laughs> Meanwhile, so, divide these by, by 10 and then subtract another like few not, percent. Not just yep. a V12, but a twin turbo V12. Yeah, that's right. It was God. twin turbo. But, or as Mercedes says, bi turbo. Bi turbo, yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> round your turbo. numbers up. Oh, I got to play with an SLS one afternoon. Uh, what? Yeah. It, it was a Roadster. It was like the cheapest, or it was, sorry, the cheapest. It was the most expensive. <laughs> Uh, car for sale like in the city at that time kind of thing when I drove and it was like 200 grand or some craziness like that but that was a lot of fun I don't think I've ever even seen an SLS to be honest uh, our local Toyota dealer Hill here has a black roadster it was, Toyota uh, dealer yeah the Toyota dealer uh no the coupe was the one that with the door doors that do this yeah That's the roadster just Valley a regular joke. doors that do this well, that's a convertible gotcha. yeah yeah Oh man, now I want to know if I can find that picture. Good God. Um, wow, we are so tangented. That's fine. Uh, yeah, no, but in, in terms of cheap horsepower, having owned a Challenger, not one of the good ones, it was a 5.7, it was, it was a Challenger, and having probably put close to 1,000 miles on the S550 Mustangs and probably also having put 500 miles on 5th and 6th gen Camaros, <laughs> um mustang all day every day no question yeah not even a question camaros i, I still can't see out of the blind spot from the don't they have a really yeah. high door sill like they do the the, the like, greenhouse the, right here. Yeah, yeah the door sill is here and the yeah. the roof line is here and you have about six inches of real estate to look around and all of the journalists will tell you that the camaro is the best one because it handles the best over eight tenths you don't drive at eight tenths unless you're like driving a canyon or on the track, you know. 
and I don't have any canyons around me and there's only one track. So yeah, I have, uh, I have two tracks. I can't afford going to either of them. So. <laughs> you actually have a car that can be driven on track too. I can, but you know, what's a lot cheaper than track driving autocross. I can autocross yep. a whole season for the cost of half of a track day. Wait, what kind of car do you have? I daily drive a 2013 Miata. Oh, it's a great car. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. I yeah, love it. Great cars. It is. Yeah, I that's like America's sports car, except that's kind of the Mustang and Corvette. But. Yeah, it's it's Japan's British sports car. Yeah. And it, I, I don't it's know. It's the I, answer. It is the answer. And there I, has to be a vanity plate somewhere on a Miata that just says the answer, right? That's not even a question. <laughs> I'm sure it exists, it, but it's the car's so good. I I fucking love that thing. I've owned challengers and corvettes and wrx and i just it starts every time i get in it and watch tomorrow it won't start but <laughs> change the oil put the roof down and like nothing else it doesn't care about anything else it's so similarly i i bought brand new a 2007 honda s2000 and i love that car love that if car. i sold my miata tomorrow i would buy an s2000 not even a question so make sure it's an 04 or newer those are the ones that have I the 99 to 03s were also good. AP1s are good. I yep. love AP1s. AP2s are supposed to be like the pinnacle of front engine rear drive sports cars. Yeah, the AP1 would rev about another 1,000 RPM above the AP2s, but yeah. I think the AP2s had like nine foot pounds of torque more maybe, which in a Honda, that means Ooh. a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's 10%. <laughs> but yeah, that was a fantastic car. I regret selling it. I had it for two and a half years, I believe. Okay. Uh, and managed to make That's a clutch a last that long. Because, I mean, you really have to rev those things and pop the clutch to get them moving. Right. Isn't power only really above, like, 4,000, 5,000 RPM? Yeah, that's about right. That's about yeah. right. That's one of the only things I've heard about Miata being better than S2000 is that, like, oh, there's actually a little power down at the bottom. And by a little, I mean, like, really a little. But it's... Three foot mounts. Yeah. Like, I don't have to rev over, like, 2800 rpm to drive it every day 2800 seems like a lot <laughs> well you if you're driving a, a five-cylinder diesel xj 2800 <laughs> is a lot so well yeah 2800 is yeah i think boost with my turbo with the stock turbo comes on at like 1500 rpm which is actually oh high but the, the motor just revs i mean what that motor was like originally i guess designed for is high-speed auto bonding so right. all the horsepower is up high in the, in the rev range for that diesel. It's not a bunch of low-end torque, mm -hmm. which people get in that thing. And, you know, I like the mechanics at Summit 4x4, which is our local uh, four-wheel drive shop. Every now and again, I'll take the Jeep up there to have the tires balanced and rotated. Um, and they'll drive it, and they're like, what's wrong with this motor? I'm like, nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all. You're just doing not, what it's supposed to do. Right. Your brain just <laughs> isn't programmed for what, how and why it's supposed to act like this. Yeah, exactly. So do you, I, nope, you sorry. go. Nope. So I was going to say, I see your shirt. Do you run trail tech equipment? Because my brother two weeks ago no, installed a trail tech unit in his four by four different company. Oh, this different company. company. Yeah. This is a, uh, just a builder in Richmond. Good friend mm. of mine. Oh, that's so weird. Nice guy, but yeah, trail tech four by four. They, they build, uh, you know, trucks in Richmond. Huh. He's getting a free shout out. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> free plug. I'll give NASA a shout out. To him. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's great. My, I literally uh, started watching the right stuff on Disney plus uh, a couple nights ago. Oh, shh, don't say anything. I have to start it tomorrow. No, no. After I'm, I watch Mandalorian. I'm only, I'm kind of upset. Ross, there's only four episodes. What? I don't know it's, if they're like going to drag it like out. An hour? Like, yeah, like they're an hour each, but like, that's still, I'm like, only four. That's not enough. <laughs> I need more. For whatever reason, I'm all, I'm down for vintage space program. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't feed the science geek nearly enough. They, we, we've still got what, like another 50, 60 years of life. I think it's possible that we could go to space. Yeah. Like, Do you mean recreationally? Space? Yes, recreationally. Privately. I think that would be amazing. Well, it was just over 60-ish years ago that we actually did go to space. So, yes, I, I believe it. We have <laughs> other things we have to tackle as a society right now. Yeah, yeah. Like not 
Never mind. I'm not even going to go into it. <laughs> <laughs> so That's many okay. options. Just yeah. myself, that is not what this podcast is Landmines. about. Landmines. Open-ended. Fucking <laughs> rumor rakes <laughs> all over the place. Yep. Yeah. Speaking yep. of Arizona. Uh, Speaking of, <laughs> well done. <laughs> where have you – I mean, I've seen pictures. You've, it looks like you've been getting out some. Is yeah, just, I mean, we're not, we're not totally shut down. I would say we're probably one of the more open states. Uh, there's – I mean – Pretty much everything is open, maybe. I mean, even bars are open here. But, I mean, it's requiring a mask, wash your hands, all that kind of stuff. You know, the, the I guess the goofy part is, for me, is walking through a restaurant with your mask on, sitting down at the table, and then you can take it off. Which right. you can't yeah, walk one plus off. one doesn't equal two in that case. Yeah, just, it's, it's, they're goofy things. But anyways, we won't, we won't get too far into that. But, yeah, we're, for the most part, open, uh, which which is nice. You know, life is not completely back to normal, but, you know, it's it's getting there. So. so from where you are, because you're in Prescott, right? Yeah. Which is spelled Prescott. Prescott, but it's pronounced Prescott. <laughs> oh, God, which yeah. I have spent so much time on Google Street View looking at the mountains outside of Prescott that you told us about when you came on last time. Like, it seems amazing. This place is epic. Yeah, I mean, you, have to, you have to come visit. It's just incredible. I was so close. <laughs> you really were. <laughs> and again, so planning to move here. This is a terrible place to live. Don't move here. <laughs> awful. I hate it. And if you're an outdoor person, this is the worst place you can come. To. See that? That's how I feel about Kansas City right now. We have lots of friends, and 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 uh, I've, I've added a lot of friends recently that have moved here from California or the East yeah. Coast or things like that. And I'm kind of like. I don't want anybody else to come. And they're like, well, I'm from somewhere else. And I'm like, well, welcome. I mean, you're, yeah. you're here. Yeah. So. And meanwhile, in the Northeast, it's just, yeah, it sucks. Don't come here. That's it. So, I got nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Is there a body of water near you guys? Wat- Watson Lake? Does that sound right? Yeah, Watson Lake is like a small kind of lake right here in town. But uh, to the not, I wouldn't really say there's a big body of water. But to the north, we have um, uh, Lake Mead, of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then yep. south we have is that Lake Havasu down south? I can't remember. I have not uh, been able to explore as much of Arizona this year. Looks like Lake like. Pleasant stuff is going dead on. south of you. Yeah, Lake Havasu is like way southwest of here, I believe, or west of Prescott. Rather. It's west, yeah, west, west, west. And there, it, there is no road west to get there. <laughs> No, that's mm-hmm. the interesting thing about Arizona is you're kind of driving, you know, around and up and over things, which kind of reminds me of South Africa, interestingly enough. But yeah, there's no really road through things. It's kind of you're, you're dealing with the terrain more than anything. Yeah. So. Like there's a road that looks like it goes southwest out of Prescott that looks not, not very large. Uh, yeah, 89? Yep, 89. Yeah, which, that runs south out of Prescott. That's, that's a two-lane road. Um, so and that looks like it would tie into ninety. Nope, tie into yeah. That goes what well, goes down 60? into seventy one and then ninety three and ninety three. I believe turns into sixty going into Phoenix. Yep. Yep. So if you go west, then you get up to Havasu. <laughs> Basically, which Havasu like Havasu looks like a Midwest lake in that it literally looks like they just dammed something up and it flowed into the hills. I haven't actually, <laughs> been there, unfortunately. Yeah, I've, I've lived here since February and have yet to explore the entire state. But, you know, this is a bad year to do that, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, not too kind for that. Right. But this winter, I'm absolutely planning to go s- to southern Arizona because it just gets warmer. Right. You can literally drive away from the cold. Yeah, that's the nice thing about Arizona is, you know, you want snow, you can go up in a flag and you can actually ski up there if you want. You know, yep. Flagstaff. And then you can you ski in Flagstaff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a ski resort there. Really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the highest peak in Flagstaff is like eleven or twelve thousand feet. Uh, Clearly, I know fucking nothing about this part of the country. <laughs> Flagstaff. Yeah, yeah dude, you're a long way away. You definitely read up on this, but it's a super interesting state. Um, but yeah, you I, I get a geography down lesson down every episode. Summertime, basically, so the places I'm planning on going is uh, Tucson down to Tombstone. Okay. Like old, old school town down there. Uh, Tombstone is really cool. That is sounds in, ominous. Is that like Wyatt Earp tombstone? Yeah, that's the same tombstone. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just southern Arizona is a lot warmer. You can go down there, hang out. I mean, it's only four to five hours to get down there, maybe. Oh, tombstone looks 
awesome. Oh my God. That's a period <laughs> in time place. Holy yeah, shit. Uh, definitely got, uh, definitely got forgotten by time, but it's a really, really cool town. A lot of history dying to go there. That's pretty cool. And we have just a ton of open like space it. around there, but Arizona is so vast, so huge, and it, it's and just it, a beautiful, interesting state. It really is. It, so, it's one of those, it's like a sleeper state, you know, like you don't think much of it because there's no huge major city or anything, you know, not of the scale of the way the automotive industry talks about Detroit or Los Angeles or San Francisco or Seattle or something. I but mean, Phoenix, Phoenix is a massive city. I think Phoenix, Phoenix is a big city. Population is like what? Three and a half million. I believe. Yeah. Is that high? Is that right? It's that big. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. It's a massive city. Um, but I think I think Yavapai County, which is the Prescott area, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly, is like eighty thousand people. So the Prescott oh, wow. area is not very, you know, populated or large um, compared to Phoenix. Phoenix is, in my opinion, a hot zoo. <laughs> <laughs> melty, I mean, melty just, zoo. Yeah, just, so I, just amazing, like two hours south of here, it's one hundred and seventy degrees, but you come up into Prescott and it's seventy-five to eighty degrees. Yeah, it's yeah. just amazing that elevation change. I was going to say, what's the elevation difference? Uh, I believe it's like 3,000 around Phoenix, and up here it's about 53 to 5,500. Okay, that's appreciable. Yeah, so but it makes a big difference in the weather. And mm-hmm. I just, personally, I think Prescott is one of the best climates there is. No, that's... Uh, we, we do, it does get cold here. I mean, down at night, like two nights ago, three nights ago, which interesting story about that. Uh, I got down to about 24 degrees, and I just moved into a brand new place in June. And Number. I have gas, I have gas heat and I didn't realize I have gas heat. So I never had the gas turned on because it was summer. You know, you just don't think about this. Ah. So I go to throw mm. the heat on the other night. I'm like, why isn't this working? I know I have all my utilities turned on. I thought heat was electric. Well, turns out it's gas. Never had the gas turned on. So <laughs> I think I woke up to 53 degrees inside my place. Woo. Oh, yeah. Uh, a little bitter, but the shower was nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 53 is the temperature where you're like, okay, my bones hurt, my yeah, everything not, hurts. Kind of so do you have an electric water heater then? Yeah, electric water heater. Huh. But I mean, the nice thing is if power ever goes out, I still kind of have gas, but the blower wouldn't work. Right, right. yeah. I still would get gas heat, but yeah, probably have to hook the XJ up to the house or something. We had a... Uh, <laughs> We had a fireplace in our in our old house that was a, a gas fireplace, but it was powered by a wall switch, right? So you just flip the switch on or off and the fireplace would turn on and off by gas. That's pretty and normal here. The power had gone out. And so I walked over and I was like, there's no power, but I wonder if I flip the switch, what happened? And I flipped the switch and there was enough voltage left in the system and okay. started the fireplace. Yep. So power's, power's out, there's no heat in the house, but the fireplace is working. Right. Yeah. Power comes back on, I kill the fireplace kids start to wait this was fairly early in the morning kids start to wake up we only had two kids at that time and my youngest uh walked over to me and he was like ouchie daddy and i was like what do you mean ouchie and i looked at his hand it's starting to bubble he had gone over and slapped the glass fireplace with his hand so next thing i was doing was out diggling snow out of the driveway because we were going to the (laughs) children's mercy er (laughs) what yeah Turns out they have really specific ways to find out if we were abusing him or if it was an accident. Yes. Also, back up a question. Why did he slap the glass fireplace? Because he was two. Oh, he was two. Oh. Yeah. He was two. Connor was yeah. five. Yeah. It was no further explanation needed. Two year and, you can't explain anything to two-year-old. And he's now nine, and he would probably do the same kind of goofiness. <laughs> like, it's just the way it happens. That's fucking funny. Okay. So yeah, we need to go travel the Southwest, Ross. We do. Yeah, we no. do. Welcome anytime. Well, because we talked to one. Let's we do... talked to John Watson from Radivist, who's in Santa yes. Fe, mm-hmm. and he kind of opened our eyes to like Santa Northern New Mexico and Colorado. Just there happens to be this imaginary line that some jackass drew across them, but really they're not in that different. Right. And I feel like a lot of people ignore New Mexico. I, I agree. They also ignore Idaho. Idaho is an incredible state. Yeah. They're also good things. Yep. See, see the reason I'm, I'm drawn towards New Mexico is I can get there in like 10 hours. Um, and I can fly there in like 10 hours. 
It's definitely not 10 hours across the country on a flight. You check it. No, but by the time you take the hour and a half to get to the airport, the hour and a half to get through TSA, the three you or four hours driven. on a flight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to go here. I'm going to yeah, go there. I think, uh, I think next year is probably New Mexico for me. And this, this, uh, the rest of the year is Southern Arizona, exploring that, and then New Mexico. So – and I, I haven't experienced this other than the week I, that I was kind of out in Utah. Like, you can just pull off wherever you want, right? If it's BLM land, it's public land. Yeah, you can pretty much pull off the side of the road and camp. And there are, what are they, trapezoid-like signs that basically alert you to the fact that you're on BLM land? Yeah, there's what? some of them. Um, they're can- like field office signs that they're like, you're now in this field office's responsibility right. of area. Right. So it's like jurisdiction that. changes. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Any any public property is usually pretty well marked because people just don't want you on it. So mm. usually a lot of you know private property signs if there is private property you know backing up to BLM land for example. But uh. uh by the way, Humphreys Peak is just north of Flagstaff at twelve thousand six hundred feet. Yep, that's the Holy one. Holy shit! That is actually short of being an airplane. About the highest that I've ever been is. Sure. Twelve six in Colorado. Oh wow, From Prescott. Yep, and that peak is oh I don't know ninety eighty eighty ninety hundred miles away. Yeah, that's a long way away. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so twenty twenty one, we'll do. We have to do Arizona <laughs> in some capacity. Yep. I need to. I need to get a fridge freezer sponsorship. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to have to deal with ice in the desert. Aging Dometic. Hello. Dometic, yep. ARB, Snowmaster, was it National Luna? Mm-hmm. National Luna. Yeah. To, uh, what's, what's the other one? ARB there? fridges are really nice. Also, you mentioned, Angle. Adam, you, you mentioned the ARB uh, Angle, yeah. awning. I had an ARB awning on, my, on the fourth gen forerunner that I had. It was awesome. Yeah. It bashed against trees and like limbs and everything and literally didn't care. Yep. Tell, tell him about your new fourth gen. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm buying Chris's V8? forerunner. Did you get the V8? Oh, I'm buying Chris's, yeah. He's buying my <laughs> V8 forerunner. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Perfect. That 4.7 V8, those things last forever. Well, it, sh- it, it, it should because I plan to keep it forever. So has the, uh, has the starter been changed out yet? No. Well, that's Is that an fun. issue? <laughs> It's not an issue. It's just not a fun job because the starter is actually down in it's the It's below the manifold, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, that's not that bad. Yeah. Sees a lot of heat, though. Which I don't know. Does. I help someone do crank position sensors on a, on a V8, um, Yamaha V8 and an XC90 a couple of weeks ago. That wasn't fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't want to do that. No. I don't want to replace no. it. In fact, I now that you have said that, uh, Adam – I was supposed to go on a trip to Arkansas with a guy. I was going to be in my 80 series. He was going to be in his 100 series. So same engine as what's in the uh, V8 Forerunner. And yep. his starter went out. And when he started to research how long it would take to do the starter, he canceled the whole weekend. He's like, I'm going to be yeah. – he spent the whole weekend doing the starter instead of yeah. just – Sounds about right. Touring. Luckily, intake manifold gaskets and starters are all cheap. Yeah, and, and that's one of the few issues with those motors. I mean, those are million mile motors. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you really take care of them, change their oil, do all the maintenance. Timing belt, water pumps, and just keep going. Timing belt, water pump. Yeah, that's it. And you, you only do the water pump because you're already there doing the timing belt. Right, and it's only every like 90,000 miles, yeah. which my current commute is two miles. So, Which we were trying to do the math, Ross, on how long we've had it. Mm-hmm. And I. I think it's only been four years. She swears it's been five years, but I mean, four or five. That's and she's in. She's in the room making fun of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Headphones. Headphones. Five years ago, I think was right around when I bought my fourth gen. It was um, January 2016 was when I bought the fourth gen that I had. was it. Yeah. Uh, what a trip we, that was we had it before then because i have a picture of our our dog who's about to be five as a puppy and a... Hmm. man when did we get that thing 
I know. Yeah, she's called me a dumbass. <laughs> How do I math? She's like, I know I'm right. Usually that's the case. So what else is going on, Adam? How are you doing other than, uh, other than having to go rescue your friends shortly? Yeah, I do have to head out shortly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, Max Tracks have been selling like crazy this year. Um, yeah, it's just been almost nonstop. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been busy. My hair has been on fire since I've been here. What did I get here? <laughs> February 25th. Yeah. Fire mm. since then. Yeah. Right, so, right before lockdown. Yeah. I was going to say right. right when everybody realized they can't fly anywhere or like leave the country yeah. and decided that they could then, you know, go adventuring here. So yep. it's probably been good for you, right? Yeah. I mean, it has, I mean, other than, you know, things being closed down and not really being able to travel or wanting to travel a whole lot. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd say since June, things have been a little bit more relaxed. Um, you know, it's not traveling mm-hmm. isn't really an issue. You just need to be careful. But um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been, I haven't traveled as much as I've wanted to this year to really, really explore. And that's been, you know, one, because of COVID and two, uh, there's just a lot of projects on the XJ right now. It needs upper and lower control arms. So I've got adjustables ready to go Ooh. in and I put those in, I think on uh, Monday. Who, so which, uh, what brand? Ready. What's that? Say it, what brand? I uh, went with Rubicon Express, the adjustable. Nice. Upper so yeah, I think that'll for be forever and always one of the like stalwarts of you know of Jeep parts. Oh yeah, yeah, Rubicon Express. I mean, that I, I, that was the first lift I put on my first XJ was a Rubicon Express four and a half inch. You know, with mm-hmm. adjustable arms and everything. Always like the lift, but I think I'm probably going to get a little bit annoyed since I still have short arms and about three inches of lift. So my angle on my control arm still isn't great. So I've been considering doing something like a mid arm setup. Not a full okay. arm, but lowering the bracket on the frame side, just so the angle, you know, is a little bit better. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm still thinking through that, uh, if that would work, and you know, all those kinds of things. So, mm-hmm. but other than that, yeah. As soon as that that is done, I'll be able to road trip a whole lot more. So I'll be traveling a good bit more, uh, you know, here in the next month or so. Cool. I like road trips. Yeah, even the small weekend ones. Just just getting away is, uh, you know, it's been. It's been, uh, I don't know, I've been cooped up for a while this year. Uh, I get it. I, and again, everybody has, so. Well, and like, as it's finally started to get colder here, like we got snow on Monday, which was ridiculous. We never get snow this early. It's uh, just snow tomorrow night. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, I PS4S is on the Miata right now. Yeah, I told, you, I told you to go get the snow tires. <laughs> no. I told you. It was crazy. I've been dealing with winter for like, what, a month and a half-ish now? Two months, uh, maybe? Uh, like Not three here. weeks. Like, yeah. Like, okay. okay. Well, that doesn't make me feel as bad because last week we were still in the 80s. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just, the hammer dropped and in like one night got down to like 24 degrees. Oh, God. So I, yeah, so just, I, I think that might have been as I was leaving Utah. <laughs> like, it, yeah, you got so lucky. Oh, my God. I, like the day, our last day out there it was like mid 80s. And then literally as we got up the next morning and headed, north out of Kanab to catch 70 and go across to Denver um the in-car uh thermostats at 19 as I was going oh. by like Bryce Bryce Canyon that like, is a Ooh. fucking cold yeah the best part was all of the ranchers there irrigate their field so the cattle can have something to feed and all of their irrigation systems had like icicles hanging off all of them oh god and the weird part is they don't use drip irrigation oh yeah we were talking about this they they have these massive rigs with the wheels that like do the circles around. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. They don't have the the pieces that like hang down and flow like just right to the ground. They have the big things on the top that like shoot it out. Didn't we decide it's way less expensive to have that though? It, it's less expensive, but like you're on the, literally, on the front side. On the front side. Yeah, on the front side, but like you're paying for it in a long haul because you're losing so much water to evaporation, especially in a dry climate. Right. So, yeah, what's anyway. interesting is like here, for example, like middle of summer, I think it was like July or August, I accidentally spilled a bottle of water on the ground, you know, on the co- hot concrete. Yeah. Literally it evaporated. I want to say in oh, under 90 seconds, yeah. it was gone. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, 
this Virginia boy just sitting there like, right? <laughs> no, no, oh, no. You're, you're from a humid good. climate. <laughs> yeah, you got to try the egg test next yeah, year. I'm used to a climate where everything's wet. And yeah. you know, the way I describe, you know, the East Coast to people that have never been there, and there are people out here that have never been to the East Coast, I'm like, it's like a rainforest. And on the hot summer days in Virginia, it's like walking through a bowl of chili. Oh, it's just oh, yeah. hot and wet. Yeah. The worst yeah. is the summer days when you wake up and it's humid and then it rains. Yep. And then the sun comes out and it gets worse on every part of the spectrum. Yep. And it's even more humid and it's even hotter and you're just like sweating. Oh, God. Yeah, I absolutely don't miss the humidity of Virginia. But what's also interesting is, you know how you, the, a wet sponge stays damp on, for days and days and days on end on the East Coast? Out here, those things are dry in less than 24 hours. Yeah. You set a, a oh wet God. sponge on the side of your sink, all that water's gone. And this is inside your house. Yeah. So dry skin is, is you know, that's a, that's a thing here. You got to do the fried egg test next year. Just crack an egg on the sidewalk and see if it cooks. Yeah, yeah I think it will. My favorite was like washing hands and having there not be like paper towels be like, all right, I'll just walk outside and it'll evaporate. Like it's not, it's literally, it's literally less than a minute kind of thing and your hands are dry. Like this is unfamiliar. (laughs) We need to get you out. Cannot compute. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) It's definitely worth visiting the West. That's see the West is where I, Adam said two days. I think the longest I ever went was four days. And that was just reapplying deodorant every morning. Like, <laughs> cause you don't, you don't really feel the sweat either. Like you'll sweat. And then like 20 minutes later, you're completely dry. Cause everything's evaporated. Like it's really weird. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's easier in the winter time when, you know, you're, you know, not sweating during the day. So you don't need a shower quite as often. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I still, I still like a shower. I like to be clean. That's how I, yeah. that's how I start my day properly. Right. <laughs> Uh, that's your baseline metric for i'm a living comfortable like reasonably okay human being to bask in their own funk i'm I'm sure there there are people there are some fucking weirdos they ride by themselves there's probably even a club for that i don't know i'm a 100% sure there's a forum for that now probably yeah what (laughs) <laughs> on that note <laughs> <laughs> on that note you have to go rescue some people i do i do have to head out here shortly. adam's gonna do the responsible thing and and pick up some friends who've been out drinking yep. so. yeah yeah I, I i quit drinking about a year and a half ago just oh really alcohol just stopped agreeing with me i mm-hmm. uh, just stomach aches and make me feel sick and all those kinds of things but yeah i just quit and like now i'm the perma dd so you know, <laughs> are, yeah we're going out drinking you want to come i'm like not really, but I'll be, I, mean, I will babysit you if you would like. Can I meet meet you in an hour and a half? How's that sound, guys? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you pick them up in the XJ? Safe, don't mind. Is it the XJ you take to pick them up, or is no? It, it doesn't have else? rear seats. No, oh, it doesn't have rear seats. Oh well, you're drunk. Just fucking get in the back. It's fine. <laughs> I, have our, I have our company gladiator, so okay. Yeah. Sweet. I mean, no complaints there. You're drunk. Just get in the bed. It's fine. <laughs> 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 Dude, that thing's on 37s with a lift, isn't it? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's like two and a half inches of lift in 37s. I think here soon, as soon as the AEV uh, suspension comes out, it's getting that. And I, it's already got kings on it. Oh, man. So nice. it's, it's like dialed. And then I, nice. I think an AEV snorkel with a pre-filter is on the way as well. Awesome. So it's like, I think, the Gladiator. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. though there are probably more expensive builds out there, like the guys that did the V8s and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Oh, God. There's one floating around with a Hellcat engine. What? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I, so I, I can't remember if it was like Ultimate Adventure or something, but there's a, there's a Hellcat I Gladiator. I just imagine driving something as big as the Gladiator. Not that it's massive, but it is a big vehicle with 700 horsepower. That would, that would blow something that big and girthy and, uh, yeah, having that much power just – it doesn't seem normal by any means. It seems like you should carry a lot of spare axles. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so right. it looks like Hennessy has something that has a thousand horsepower in a gladiator. I don't want that. No, thank you. I want to try it, but I don't want to own it. It's called the Maximus. Oh, yeah, I heard about this. yeah. I remember that now. Which is kind of appropriate. I remember that movie. My question is, when you apply a thousand horsepower to probably pretty squishy suspension, what does that truck do other than huck over and then go? It does the stadium super trucks and lifts a front wheel. And oh, then... 
Yeah. Sounds so much fun. I love stadium super trucks. We were talking we about it too. last night, actually. Oh, it's it's... Like my favorite thing to watch. And you know, the I watch those. I watch like the reruns of those races on on YouTube. Oh, all the time. The best ones is from the race track in Perth, in Australia. Those we were literally talking about this twenty four hours ago. Up, they jump. You know, they just oh, it's the yeah. best race track for those super trucks. Say Perth is Western Australia, where things are a little rougher. I I personally prefer Adelaide. Because in Adelaide, you get the camera shot of the trucks going by and the fans watching it, and the trucks are higher than the fans watching. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love Australia that shot. Things. Yeah. <laughs> it seems the, the most mischief that goes on in those races is at the Perth, you know, race. <laughs> it, oh, is. Yeah. it is. Yeah. It's total freaking mayhem. It's oh, But it looks like so much fun to watch. I'll be honest. Like, I, I've, I've worked with race teams. I've been watching racing forever, but, like, I've never been so entertained by racing as I am by stadium super trucks. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. It's, it's mm -hmm. so much fun to watch. It is. It is. They put on a fucking show. It's so they good. They do. I just, I love how many times, like just the wonkiness that they all can like, hold on. I've got the image to share. Well, just just the abuse nobody's straight. Take. Nobody's <laughs> straight. Oh, yeah. good fucking God. Being able to land going 70 miles an hour <laughs> that high and still recover and have a balanced vehicle blows my mind. <laughs> like, so that's obviously Robbie Gordon in the front there, oh, who's yeah. gonna probably blow a tire. I, I, I like when the whole front of the truck flies off because the tires got into the uh, body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. I like that one. Oh, when that's uh, the other cool thing that Maddie they don't Bravo, do is when there's debris on the track. They don't stop the race. It doesn't matter. matter. Just hit it. Yeah. Thing. Yep. Just hit it. It's so much fun to watch. Any other series, it's either, you know, yellow flag or like red flag. There's too many rules. And yep. and like I understand their rules because of safety. We don't want anybody to die or get hurt, but it just That's doesn't seem like there's rules with the stadium super truck, which yeah. is what makes it so entertaining. It's like racing of the past in current times. It's so good. Oh, it's so fucking good. Yep. The, just the full compression that they get just yeah, just, I wonder what that feels like getting the air off of those ramps and landing. I, be, I bet the it up feels is fantastic. Good. It's the the down. That I'm not. Well, yeah, that's usually how it is. <laughs> it looks like for a lot of them, it's fairly comfortable, but just. But for those trucks to be able to light, land on one corner of the suspension, and still survive and come down planted and and you composed know, all over the place is just yeah. incredible. It's just incredible they and can handle that kind of abuse. I also like early on where they're all like nose to tail, like V8 supercars would be going through the chicanes, but they all hit those ramps just bam, 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 bam. And it's just like one after the other leapfrogging. I like the yeah, ones so. where they can't, on the second ramp, they can't quite get square with right. the second ramp. So yeah. they go off the side of the ramp and just, yeah. oh man. That's they come so down at like fun. a 45 degree angle. Right, right. I'm oh, just, it's yeah. so good. Those guys have, must have so much fun. I can't speak well enough about the stadium super trucks. It's just incredible to watch. And apparently up until like 2015, they were doing uh, races down in Phoenix. Really? I, really? But if they bring it back, I am going to be a season ticket holder. <laughs> I will go to every race. Front row. Yeah. Oh, uh, hell, I'll even like see if I can afford a box in the, you know, the stadium. <laughs> my friends. <laughs> oh, we need, That's we need awesome. to. We need to try and get in with those guys. We need to talk we to do. them. Yeah, we really do. Oh, it's so good. I don't know if they could use Max Tracks, but, you know, just. Yeah, I don't know that they need to. <laughs> <laughs> sure they would love a sponsor. Right, right. You could probably throw some of the, uh, I mean, they do go to Australia. I'm sure Max Tracks would throw the name on the side of a truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just got to outbid uh, Super Cheap Auto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder how much it costs to get a name on a truck. It's interesting. I bet we less know than a guy. Formula One. Also, I that. So I would certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Formula One's millions, I would imagine. Yes. You know, I don't think yes. it's as bad as we think it is anymore. Hmm. I I think a lot of people are kind of turned off by uh, gas-powered motorsport. Well, the perceived cost of Formula One. So not everybody's running over there to do it. Now, that being said, like I. I know Marriott put an advertisement on the Mercedes cars fairly early on in the season uh, last year. And I think it only lasted for like three races because whatever the rate was, was way, oh, way God. high enough that even Marriott was like, yeah, just three races. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's, there's an old saying that, uh, you know, you can become a millionaire owning a race team 
if you're a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's how yeah. that works. You know, oh. racing is, is nothing but, you know, money yep. out the window. Yep. It's right, Mr. Stroll? That's right. Okay. Yeah. It's expensive. But, yep. you know, there's another saying. I, I think it's uh, go racing with other people's money. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. But anyways. Dude, we could get we could get media passes for stadium super trucks. Oh, shit. Like or at least we, we could request them. I don't know if they'll give them to yeah, us. Yeah, we could. I mean, <laughs> what's the take? All right, if they do a Phoenix race, then it's a date. Y'all are <laughs> yeah, deal. Definitely. Fucking deal. Uh, 100%. No. So. All. Okay. We'll have to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On that note. on that There note, are regulations. Go, <laughs> I'm, I don't doubt that for a second. And we should let Adam go before his friends. Uh, have uh, another round? Have another round or ride. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. They're comfortably numb. But yeah, yeah. I, I, do, I do need to get going. So sweet. So our fifty nine minutes turned into ninety minutes. <laughs> yeah. You can follow Adam uh, at Overland underscore History is the yep. personal XJ. Uh, at Adventure Imports. Yeah, at Adventure Imports, and then we also have uh, at Max Tracks HQ as well. So that's the that's main Max Tracks account as well. That's the main. Okay, that's the main one. I was like, yep. I'm pretty sure I follow both, but yep, universally uh, known. So you can read what we write on Hooniverse, uh, Everyday Driver. Ross put some of my Land yep. Cruiser pictures up on Everyday Driver. I did. Read, read, I wrote an article for Everyday Driver this week about how the Land Cruiser is basically taking the place of the Supra in the enthusiast brain. And uh, I used Chris's pictures. Interesting. Adam, I actually like to read that article. I, I do want to read that article. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's up on the homepage uh, of Everyday Driver. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is, I, yep. I'm going to bookmark that now. Do it. <laughs> Uh, you can follow me at Overlanding Dad on Twitter and Instagram. Ross is on Twitter, but he doesn't tweet ever. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on all the social media, but I don't do any of it in here, so it's midpoint. You're not so, missing anything. <laughs> no. Ross's Instagram is at no, not like the one from Friends. I have to say yep. it slow so I can remember to include <laughs> all of those appropriate syllables. Yep. I haven't opened Instagram other than to look at our own show stuff in probably three months. Did you see the message I sent you today? There's a message waiting for you on Instagram today. It, oh it, God. Okay. Okay. It, okay. it was really, it was just from Taylor, I think. Uh, oh. <laughs> Clearly I did. Sorry, Taylor. Yep. Anyway, that's it. Uh...